Hey, what's up guys? Coming at you with another Bitwig video. Today we're talking about Bitwig 6, which is the new fire update for Bitwig. If you haven't got it yet, go get that thing. But it's really, really awesome. There's going to be tons of videos about Bitwig today and Bitwig 6, but I really wanted to talk about the piano roll because I think it's really, really incredible with what they did to it, right? So me being an FL Studio user for the longest time, that's kind of the first DAW that I grew up on, right? Uh, you know, I used to think that the piano roll was impeccable. Uh, workflow was awesome, clips, all of that great stuff. Well, now Bitwig has incorporated a lot of that into their own DAW. So I really wanted to walk around some of the features today and scratch the surface and show you what's capable and why you should download this uh, update. It's really, really awesome. So without further ado, let's kind of get into it. So looking here in the DAW now, you can see we get this really new fresh look. It's really, really nice. And I really enjoy the, the look of it. It's just a little bit more fluid and it's a little bit more uh, sleek, right? But one thing that you'll notice here at the top of the toolbar up here is we got a new feature here, which is the global key scale, right? So here we can come in and we can set the scale for anything that we're going to be working on, right? Whatever key you want to be working on, whatever mode you want to be working on, you can do that here in this menu. And what's really nice about this is once you select this, all of your instruments will kind of fall in line. Um, and some of the other key features in the piano role will actually work as well. So again, here I have F minor, uh, F sharp minor selected here. So that's kind of a prerequisite. So use that. And then a lot of these features will unlock for you. But now we're here in the piano role here with this instrument, minimal audio current, right? So looks very similar, but we got some new options here. So here at the very bottom corner, we can come up and once you select a key that you want to be working in, we can come to the key signature actual menu here and we can come to the note background and we can actually have it adapt to key. So now when we come to this menu, we can see that all of the lanes in our scale are revealed to us, which is really nice. This is kind of like what reminds me of FL Studio a lot, right? So another cool feature that we got here on the side is we actually got this lock and snap to key button. So now every move that I make, they're all gonna be in key, right? So that's a really cool feature as well here. Another cool thing is, so instead of using the pointer tool, which, you know, is still effective for, you know, selecting different parts of the actual piano roll, you have to actually double click though, to get a note in, which is kind of not as intuitive as FL Studio with the one click and the right click to delete, right? Here, I can't right click to delete. It just kind of gives me the options to do some other stuff. I would have to highlight it and then I use a modifier key here. Um, I have it set to X for delete, right? Well, now if you use the actual pencil tool here, right? This is where it, it gets really cool. So I'm using the pencil tool here and I can just one click and I got notes inside of here, much like FL Studio. And then if I right click and I hold, I can delete stuff when I let go of the mouse, right? When I hover over it, I can right click, highlight it, and then let go of it. Or I can do multiple selections, right? Or I can highlight multiple things and delete it. Really, really awesome. So I have, obviously, uh, it's gonna be different for everybody, but I have that as a modifier three. So I can switch from the pointer tool and then hit three and now I have the pencil, right? And I can draw these notes in as long as I need them and then I can erase them with the right click, which is really nice. Now they've also incorporated this new tool here, which is the spray can, which kind of makes operators a little less something that you would wanna use. Now, because again, what's cool about using the spray can instead of operators is that now you can affect velocity and pitch, right? So you can not only, you know, cut up the actual note slice, but now we can actually, you know, affect the, the velocities and pitch, right? So with the spray can here, depending on the actual uh, grid size here, it's going to repeat. And then we also have the right click and hold to delete them, which is amazing, right? So 
And then if we affect the grid, right, we can make the grid a little bit smaller. Right, and we can get all of those notes there, or we can make it a little bit bigger. Right, and I have the grid now on my modifiers five and six. So my five and six key control the grid, while my four key and my three key control either the pencil. And then if I hit the four, then I got the duplicate. And then I got five and six. Five is to make it go longer. Six is to make it go shorter, right? So now I can create really intricate patterns, right? This is really cool for melodic stuff, but I would say it's even arguably so cooler for drum stuff. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna delete everything. Let's go to an actual drum pattern here. So if we open up the actual, let's actually come in here. Now we can see, right, we can go from either looking at the piano roll view or more of a drum view now. And so with the drums, we got the same level of control. So again, three is going to be where you can control how long the actual uh, you know hit is or the placement, right? So it just makes it really easy to come in and really just you know drop the MIDI where you need it to be, which again is so intuitive. It's like FL Studio, right? Right, cool stuff like that. Um, and then again, I have my modifier set. So three is the pencil where I can drop things in. Four is the repeater tool, right? And then five is the grid size. So I can make the grid longer, shorter, right? And so this makes drum editing very fast and intuitive, right? Because I can have it set at 16th or eighths and I can just easily make um, a pattern that I like, right? Now, the only thing that I found that is kind of a hiccup with this is that when you are using the spray can, especially in the drum mode for some reason, when you use the spray can with the drum mode, like say for instance, I wanna come here and I create a hi-hat pattern, right? So now we have. Now, if these are highlighted and I try to right click them, it opens up that menu. So if I wanted to delete them, Instead of the spray can, I'm going to have to switch to the actual uh, pencil here. And once I switch to the pencil, then I can delete them, right? So I can come in here. If I don't like that, switch to the pencil, and then I can delete them, right? So it makes it a little bit faster. I think that's just a hiccup with the early stages of this, but it's still amazing, right? Because now we can come in here and create some patterns like that. And then I can come in here with the pencil tool, erase that, maybe make the grid a little bit smaller here, uh, switch to the paint can. Right, and then we can just delete some stuff. Uh, let's put one here. Spray can, let's do that, and then make that smaller. Let's delete those. Let's switch to the paint can, make that a little bit bigger and then smaller and then smallest. So we can really do a lot of cool stuff with the drums now, right? And then again, we can switch to the pencil tool, add these different hits here. There we go. Right, so to your heart's content, you can just come in here and just start crafting these MIDI patterns just like FL Studio. It feels almost identical to that when you use these modifiers, both the pencil and the spray can. It makes it so easy to just go between them and um, you know, create these really intricate patterns. So this works with you know drums for sure, but just imagine with MIDI, right? So MIDI is also very valuable. But again, when we switch between those, when I come back to my, um, when I come back to my melodic instrument here, when I switch back to the piano roll, I have those 
keys uh, highlighted for me, right? So I can come in here and use the three. And just create just tons of patterns. Obviously, you're also seeing that the notes are highlighted and I have it pretty much highlighted by pitch class. So each of the notes are gonna be different based off of the pitch and the scale, but you can kind of change this again in this menu here. So in this menu, you can have that change. What's really cool about this as well, right, is say we have a pattern here. Um, let's find a note here. You can just have the repeat of these. So again, using this modifier here. And we can have something like that all the way across. So once I can create, you know, say I created this MIDI pattern, I like this, right? Just something like that. Um, let's mute the drums here. So what's cool now is that I can now clone this over, right? I could duplicate this over. And now when I duplicate this over, I have the option, if I right click on the pattern, we have this new pattern selector here. So again, we can come here to this, this uh, drop down and like FL Studio, we can select which pattern it is. So is it uh, you know pattern one or pattern three, whichever one you want. And you can kind of change those instances. So for this one, for instance, I can change some of these notes, for instance, let's kind of remove these. And so now we have something kind of completely different than this pattern here, right? If we're looking. Uh, you can see how those are different. But if I wanted, say, to change this one to the first pattern, I can right click on it and I can come here and go to pattern one. And now this is that new pattern. So again, it's like working in the same kind of clip dimension as FL Studio, which again is amazing. I want to go more in depth with this because I'm going to have to play with it to kind of find out more features. But I was really excited about this and I wanted to share this with you. It's just really, really awesome. And again, if you wanted to do something outside of the realm of the pattern or, or clip that you've already established here, right? What you can now do is you can right click and then you can go to make unique, right? So if you wanted to do, you know, something original or change the pattern, again, it's kind of like FL Studio in that fact. So really, really cool stuff. I'm going to get you know, into it a lot more. I'll have way more to share with you, but I just really thought, you know, on release demo day, I just wanted to share this with you, and I think it's really, really important that you go try this for yourself, especially if you are an FL Studio user. So awesome stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.